Well, it's my pleasure to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Cord von Einem and his senior staff officer, Chief Lessons Learned Branch of the Civil Military Cooperation Centre for Excellence in the Netherlands. I know that's a mouthful, but I wanted to say it all because you work in the equivalent uh, of the centre that is hosting this conference, don't you? Tell us about your centre. Yes, uh, the Simic Centre of Excellence basically is located in the Netherlands, in Enschede, which is right off uh, the German border. Uh, we are in, an institution uh, which is uh, established by a few uh, European nations, uh, NATO nations, but uh, we are not in the command chain of NATO, we are independent. And uh, we deal with uh, the same topics as your center here in Australia uh, with civil military cooperation. Yeah, and, uh, and, and how long have you existed? Since 2005. And uh, who funds you? Uh, our uh, contribution nations, uh, sponsoring nations, uh, European nations uh, like uh, Germany and uh, the Netherlands, but uh, also Poland, Hungary and a few others. And do you try to have staff that come from the, uh, that diverse range of nations as well? Yes, mainly. Um, so, but uh, we, we welcome everybody who want uh, to work with us. and. Uh, uh, everybody can come to us and share experience, knowledge and education. Could you give us some, some examples of the work that you do, whether it be conferences or research, what, whatever, just to give us a sense of the diversity of what you're doing? Oh, basically, um, our main work is to be subject matter expert for NATO and our uh, sponsoring nations in the field of CIMIC uh, topics. And what does that mean, CIMIC? CIMIC means uh, civil military cooperation, so the interrelation between the uh, civil environment and uh, the military, because uh, we face uh, these challenges uh, on nowadays, in nowadays conflicts uh, worldwide. And uh, we are well aware of uh, the fact that uh, modern conflicts cannot be solved only with military uh, 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 topics. Uh. Yeah. Military responses, and do you do work in relation to disasters and humanitarian responses to disasters? Yeah, we also work on that, um, on humanitarian assistance in uh, disasters and uh, disaster relief, uh, because this is also uh, something that is uh, required from uh, political uh, stakeholders, and uh, yeah, we are dealing also on that. And, and NATO. What is the role of NATO in the 21st century? There must have been changes and shifts there in its role and focus as, as Europe has changed. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, our centre is uh, playing a role in that as well. Um, we, we have seen in the past conflicts and uh, ongoing conflicts that the comprehensive approach is key to many of the conflicts uh, worldwide. And uh, also NATO is learning uh, that experience and uh, we are helping NATO in that. Uh, our centre is uh, not part of the NATO uh, command chain, but is NATO accredited. I, I'm interested in uh, one or two of the issues that you're working on personally in your work. What are, what are you doing when you go back to the Netherlands? What's the focus of your work? Well, I, I started my career in CIMIC as, as a CIMIC staff officer in the German Army Force Command, uh, but transferred uh, this September to the uh, Center uh, of Excellence. And uh, here I have uh, the task uh, to establish lessons learned. And uh, we are orientated uh, on, on the uh, lessons learned uh, structure of NATO. You know, everything here at this conference is, is, is seems to be about developing a common language and methodology uh, to learn lessons, to put them into action, to understand transitions and to manage them and so on. And I'm just thinking, at your centre, you have a mixture of cultures, actually different cultures, some of whom have been at war within living memory. Uh, how do you manage, what have you learnt about cooperation across cultural boundaries and with former enemies? Well, basically, um, we have to be open and we learn that on our daily uh, work. Uh, what does that mean, open? Well, different cultures, different opinions, uh, different approaches uh, to things we deal with. 
But uh, this is uh, basically what we have to learn if we want to uh, solve conflicts uh, worldwide. And, uh, one of the people I've interviewed for this conference uh, spoke uh, with passion about the need to avoid stereotypes. She was talking about stereotypes of military versus someone who works for the en a non-government organisation. Is that something that's important in, in Europe too, this complex Europe, that you have to avoid your cultural stereotypes? Well, it's, it's part of our uh, nowadays uh, culture. Uh, Europe uh, tries to transition uh, from, from different states uh, to a more... Uh, yeah, common state, <laughs> let's say it this way. And um, so we have to learn how to, to live with other cultures, other opinions. And I think we are doing uh, good in this job. Uh, the economic troubles in, in Europe, though, are, are bringing some new tensions into those relationships again, aren't they? Yeah, but uh, nothing that uh, is not uh, or cannot be solved. Um, so. I don't think that this will uh, be uh, or will ruin the process we achieved so far. And I guess the people who come to work at a centre like yours are by nature bridge builders, aren't they? And, and peacemakers. They have to be. You yeah. have that inclination. Yeah. Yeah. At the conference so far, are there particular issues that have interested you as you see people from the South, uh, South Pacific and so on, as well as Northern Europe? Uh, basically, everything is uh, of uh, interest for us uh, since we are a uh, learning institution. And um, so different opinions uh, are of interest for us. And especially uh, your centre here in Australia is of interest for us since uh, your centre has more a civilian face and our centre has a more military face. And uh, this is very interesting for us and we want to learn how you approach uh, things and. Uh, how you ways to solve conflicts, uh, what, what your ways are. And, and tell me what you mean by a more civilian face. Well, it starts with the personnel. Um, our personnel is uh, purely military. And uh, what we learned is uh, that your personnel is uh, mostly civilian. And this is very interesting for us uh, since a uh, comprehensive approach uh, means that we have an interagency approach on, on things and uh, our centre wants to learn from that experience. Transitions is the theme of this conference. Do you work on transitions at your centre? Yes, of course, as well, um, because we, we also monitor uh, NATO missions, and but not only uh, NATO missions, all uh, missions uh, worldwide, um, also UN missions. And um, of course, uh, there has to be a time when uh, military has to be withdrawn and um, uh, so this, this is a phase of transition and uh, to give uh, the authority or to hand over authority from military to uh, civil uh, authorities and uh, we have to learn that, yes. You know, well, earlier on I was asking someone about uh, examples of positive transitions where we could see uh, transition from war back to peace and economic development and so on. And, and the example that the person drew on was in fact from the Second World War, that Germany was devastated at the end of that war and has rebuilt itself to become the economic powerhouse of, of, of Europe, playing a crucial economic role in Europe. What can we learn from that transition? Is history relevant or is that just too far back? Should we look to Japan and Germany to learn about transition from war or should we come to more recent times? Well, basically, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's a good example. Um, but it's, the credit goes not only to, to Germany because uh, Germany was supported um, by the former enemies of Germany and uh, they did a great job and uh, helped Germany to... to be a uh, good partner uh, in Europe and worldwide and also strengthen our economy. That's, um, when we look to withdrawal from Afghanistan or withdrawal from the Solomons, uh, two of the, uh, I suppose, situations that have been discussed at this conference, again, that willingness in that final transition stage to do economic investment and development, is that an important lesson about transitions? The, 
the civilian population economic development? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, without uh, development of economy in, in a country, uh, conflicts cannot be solved. So I think one of the major topics we have to learn is how to bring countries uh, uh, which had a conflict, uh, uh, how to bring them back to normal and especially to give them work and income. What drew you personally to this work? Uh, what, what made you decide to do this as your job? Well, uh, from the background, I'm a lawyer, um, so I was uh, pretty much interested in uh, civil-military interrelation. And um, so I, I think um, I'm absolutely behind the idea of a comprehensive approach and uh, that the solution of a conflict is purely a civilian solution, civil solution. Mm -hmm. and, um, but the military can uh, give uh, time regarding security um, for this process. Okay. And the re-establishment of the rule of law and police, an effective local police, are two other themes, I think, around transition to normalcy. Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, police is part of the uh, civil environment and not of the military environment. So the sooner the military uh, withdraws from a conflict, uh, the better it is for the population. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Cord von Einem uh, from the Netherlands, thank you so much for uh, giving us some of your thoughts on the conference. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.